Hello and welcome back to our discussion on distillation. In the last module we talked about distillation cuts and distillation curves. In this module we'll pick up where we left off and talk about binary distillation. Binary distillation is where we separate a stream into two streams in a pretty standard distillation column. And so let's jump right in. To get started, let's draw a distillation column, a binary distillation column. I'll make this a little short so that we have some room to draw at the top and the bottom. And uh, we'll see if I can do a little bit straighter line than that. And so there's our distillation column. And that tower would be full of distillation trays or distillation packing. And we've introduced those concepts already, but we'll review them some more when the time is right. And this distillation column takes a feed stream into the center of the column somewhere. And that feed stream will be a mixture of materials. In the simplest case, it'll be a mixture of two materials. And an easy example to start with, because it's within the context of what we have experience with, is a mixture of ethanol and water. And what we'll do is, is we'll abbreviate ethanol, E-T-O-H, and water, we'll abbreviate H-2-O. And just for fun, let's assume that that stream is 50% ethanol and 50% water. Now, that mixture will get into the distillation column, which has trays in it, and we could draw a few of the trays in here, and uh, some trays above the feed as well and the liquids will tend to fall to the bottom of the distillation column and then normally a distillation column will have a heat exchanger in there and it'll have some kind of a heat source that goes through the reboiler and it will create steam or vapor from the bottom's product and that vapor goes back into the distillation column actually it goes back in below the bottom tray but uh, you get the idea and then this uh, material might be steam or hot oil um, it could even be a furnace uh, that's fired on fuel gas for example there's also a bottoms product stream that gets drawn off the bottom of the tower and we'll draw it out from there um, if I wanted to do just a little bit better I might sit here and I might erase those bottom two trays because it isn't really right that I have that vapor from the reboiler going back in above those trays. Um, and so that's a little bit more accurate. At the top of the tower, the vapors from the distillation call uh, from the reboiler travel up the tower. And at the top of the tower, the vapors leave the distillation column and very typically are routed into another heat exchanger. And this exchanger cools. And so this would be cooling water. And in this case, it would be the cooling water return because it's come out of the exchanger. And the cooling water going into the exchanger would be the cooling water supply. And then in that exchanger, the hot gases from the distillation tower are condensed into a liquid and sometimes there's some vapor left over. In this particular case, there probably would be no vapor. And that liquid falls into a drum. And then that drum comes out and most typically it goes to a pump. And then that pump takes the material and sends it back to the distillation column, at least partly, as reflux. And then part of that material will leave the distillation unit as top product. And so we have a top product and we have a bottoms product. If we did a very good job of distilling this mixture of ethanol and water, you could imagine that the top, uh, the bottom product, say, is mostly water. If we took another, another, made another assumption that this distillation column runs at 14.7 psia, you'll recognize that pressure as the pressure at sea level. And if this distillation column runs at atmospheric pressure, 
and if the bottoms product is about 100 percent I'm going to put about as a little squiggle about 100 percent water then we know that the temperature down here will be 212 degrees Fahrenheit and the reason we know that is because water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit at atmospheric pressure at sea level and if it's pure water it'll boil at 212. Now at the top of the distillation column, and maybe I'll change color a little bit, let's change green for a little variety, if the top product is mostly ethanol, now we can't quite get to pure ethanol because there's an azeotrope which is a topic we've discussed in the past, but say we got pretty close, we could get to <coughs> 90 or 95 percent ethanol so let's write that down 90 to 95 percent ethanol oh wait in the top product then we know that the temperature is going to be less than 212 and that's because the boiling point of ethanol of ETOH is equal to I think it's about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're not going to get to pure ethanol and so this temperature here might be around 180 degrees Fahrenheit and that's because there's a little bit of water left in that stream. Um, and so that's binary distillation in a nutshell. Uh, to summarize we have a feed that comes in that has a mixture of at least two materials. In the simplest case uh, exactly two. In this case, ethanol and water. It goes into a distillation column with a number of trays. And inside that distillation column, if I was going to erase those trays um, to give us a little bit of room to draw another piece of information in there, um, what happens is in the reboiler at the bottom, so I'm going to remove the trays, and in the reboiler, the hot vapors come from the reboiler and travel up the tower and then as they travel up the tower they cool down and less uh, all the way up the tower. At the top of the tower they go into the condenser and are uh, cooled and condensed and then they come back um, in as reflux and those liquids come down the tower as a cool liquid but as they come down the tower those those liquids start to warm back up as they travel down the tower and they will eventually hit the bottom of the tower and be hot. The hot temperatures at the bottom of the tower tend to drive the ethanol out of those liquids and drive them up the tower. Up at the top of the tower the cool temperatures at the top of the tower tend to condense the water and send the water back down the tower. So every tray in that distillation column works to kind of send ethanol vapors up and water vapors down. If we're very effective then the Bottom part, bottoms product will be almost all water. Its boiling point will be what water boils at, at whatever pressure it runs at. At atmospheric pressure it would be 212. And likewise at the top of the tower it would be cooler. It would be closer to the boiling point of the top product um, at that pressure. In this case it's nearly pure ethanol and it would maybe be in the 180 degree range. So temperatures higher on the bottom, lower on the top. The top product has a lower boiling point than the bottom product does. The bottom product has the highest boiling point and the top product has the lower, uh, lower boiling point. And I think that is about all that we need to talk about on binary distillation. When we pick this up again, we will talk a little bit about crude distillation and what we would do if we wanted to take more than two products from a distillation column, say we wanted to make four cuts or five cuts from a stream rather than just two cuts.